Pastor Ken Dignan is the um, director of Till Healing Comes Ministry. Um, he has been a part of the Eagle Rock family for a long time now. And Pastor Ken has a new book out that is called Making Sense of a Suffering World. We asked Pastor Ken if he would um, be a part of our uh, greater Eagle Rock community family in the sense that we support uh, missions each month. As you know, if you've been here before, each month we have a different uh, mission organization. Some of them are foreign, others are local or parachurch organizations. And in the month of August, uh, we are supporting Pastor Ken Dignan until Healing Comes Ministries. Now, um, he's going to come and share a missions update, and then at that point, um, we are also going to collect an offering for Till Healing Comes. Now, as you're kind of thinking about that and processing that, I would ask you to, um, as we collect the general offering also, to make the check out to Eagle Rock Community Church, at which point we will turn that into a check from the church to uh, Till Healing Comes. But um, again, as I mentioned before, we are grateful for you and for your ministry. We're speaking about, um, about love and about humility today in the message. And I want to thank you for embodying that and for uh, being a blessing to the church and to me also. That's very good. How's everybody doing this morning? Good to see all the children and good to see you here this morning. And I appreciate the privilege, obviously, having been uh, graced by the Lord to have served on the as a pastor in many different roles for 14 years here in 1997, or uh, 1998, all the way through till 2011. And it's just been a great, great opportunity to have a good relationship and a wonderful time here with uh, you and the Rock Community Church. My wife Joni says hello. My son Andy had to go do business in California, and uh, he was able to sneak his wife in for business. So we, Joni, staying overnight last night and all day today with the two grandkids, so she couldn't be here. But uh, she says hi. Um, it's very important for us to realize that uh, you know God does bless. And God blesses this church because of its faithfulness to support other ministries. And uh, God's hand is upon anybody who's generous. Amen? Amen? Generous in our time, our talents, our time. Just generosity seems to be what God wants us to do. And uh, really, our, our, our hearts are to help people. We're to love the Lord our God with all your what? Heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then to love your... You can't help that. God's created us to be people of love, agape love, giving love. And uh, when you see people in need, you see people that are hurting, your heart goes out to them. And obviously, I uh, am no stranger and have been no stranger to suffering. You know, all of us are going to suffer sometime or another. And uh, when I really came to know the Lord deeper in my life, when I was about 20 years old, having a conversion experience where I came to know the real Jesus, I came to know for sure I was going to heaven. Not I hoped I'd go to heaven, but for sure I was going to heaven that I knew Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that he loved me and cared about me. When you read the Bible, you see that he gives explanations to the most, what really one, one, one of the very important questions people ask. And the number one question, if you could ask God one question, people would always ask. Lee Strobel sent out a mailing, and if you could ask God one question, and he collected all of them. And the number one question that people responded by thousands, if they could ask God one question now, it's, God, why is there so much suffering? Have you ever asked God why? You know, it's not like you're filled with doubt or anything, but you just wonder what in the world's going on sometimes. And that's a big question. And uh, I had asked that when I was only 14 months old and got polio. So I've been at this uh, challenging physical ministry and uh, opportunities in life with the disability as far as I can remember. And when I came to know the Lord, I, I really know that God's a God of healing. How many of you know God does he answer prayers? God's a miracle God, but sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait. And we have to trust him because he always knows what's best. So I started a ministry back in 1991 that I still worked on as a pastor. But I really wanted to help people understand what it means that God does heal. I like to say God will heal us either here, there, or in the air. <laughs> so if, either way, it's coming. And even when you get a miracle here on this earth, you're still going to have to pass. We're not all going to have the privilege of a light to just hop in a chariot and kind of fly away. 
You know, that's rare. That was really the only one time we saw in the Bible with Elijah. But the fact is that God does want us to go through these things with, with, with hope. And as you can see the ministry, till healing comes. Till our healing comes, we surrender ourselves to the Lord. Till the answers come, till the blessings come, till we really see what God's doing sometimes, we need to learn to trust Him by faith. So this is where this ministry is, and uh, I've given myself full time to it now. And, uh, you know, I just really dedicated myself to this. And I began writing a book after I got out of the hospital, after the rehab center, back in February of 2012. And just, just a couple months ago in June, I finished it. 17 months writing at least five to six, seven hours a day, except on Sundays. Six days a week. How many of you think that's a lot of time? But it just flowed, and I put together why I'm making sense of a suffering world. And you know, that's really the, what I wanted to do, to show we're living in a broken world, a fallen world. And what Till Healing Comes does, and especially with this book, uh, it, it, this book deals with, it's about 300 pages, not all, if you don't like to read, don't worry, it reads fast. <laughs> it's got big print too, so. But, uh, you know, I've got a study guide in there. People can use it for small groups or for personal Bible study. But it really will help you explain to people and talk to people. I had the privilege of last Friday, a couple days ago, a woman got ALS that I knew, real, real, lived in her own part. She was like 46, 47 years old when she got it. Now she's pretty much in hospice and, and waiting to just go to heaven. But I had the privilege of just being with her and her family for over an hour on Friday. And her son, who's about 22, 23 years old, he came and he said he's been struggling. And uh, with, with tears in his eyes, he was wondering, why did God let this happen to my mom? He said it right when we were there. I said, well, I tell you. <laughs> and we began talking about that. And, and her husband, he had taken the week off of work because the caregiver was, had to take the week off. So he was there taking care of his wife all the time. So here we are talking about these very topics. How many of you know somebody that's disabled or somebody who has a severe illness or somebody who goes through a lot of trials? You know, and that's what this book's all about, making sense. And you know, there's a lot of good points in, the, in, in this book, but one thing it shows us that Jesus knows how we feel. Amen? <laughs> Jesus Christ came to earth, and what did he do? He lived a life of suffering. In fact, he's called the suffering servant, so he knows how we feel. And this book, pray for this book, pray that it gets out there more and more. Uh, so far, I've looked on the uh, Nielsen ratings, and it's so far in 14 different states across the country. People have purchased it already. So how many of you are going to pray it's going to go in 50? And just get the word out there, pray that it happens, and pray that the word spreads. But this is really the important thing, to help people deal with this. And not only that, uh, there's another slide up. How many of you know Nick Vukic? He has life without limbs. He was born, he has no arms, no legs. And he's, he's, I've become a good friend of his. And, uh, you know, just to see people like him being able to overcome things. And he inspires me. And, uh, and, and, and I, I partner now with a number of ministries. How many of you have ever heard of Johnny, Erickson Tata? I've partnered with her. She wrote part of the forward in my book. She has a ministry. You can see the family retreats. You can see up there Beyond Suffering. Uh, I've now affiliated to Healing Comes Ministries an affiliated ministry with Johnny and Friends. And uh, I am going to be privileged to speak at a Through the Roof. How many of you know when Jesus was speaking one day, friends carried a friend out, Matt, and they couldn't get in the room. What did they do? They climbed up on top of the house, opened up the flat roof there, and lowered the dude in, and Jesus said, hey, what's going on? Well, we brought him to you, Jesus, and he healed him there. Well, the Through the Roof Conference is, is encouraging churches to reach out. You, you know how many they estimate? 50 million families. 50 million families in America alone are affected by a disability. 50 million. How many of you think that's a mission field? Johnny Erickson, the ministry, did a survey. Only 2 to 4% attend church. One thing we like about Eagle Rock here, how many of you see wheelchairs at Eagle Rock sometimes? See friends with disabilities that are here. You know, and that's a beautiful thing. I visit some churches, there's not one person with a cane, a crutch, or a wheelchair. Well, we need to change that, amen? Amen. So what I do now is I help consult churches, pastors, I speak at churches now, talk to pastors, I'm in the pastor's faces. 
saying, all right, encourage your people, get your people excited about it. Uh, there's a through the roof, if you want to go to the next slide, the blue, I think it's a blue slide. Uh, well, you can go back one or something, but there it is. One more. There you go, bullseye. Um, I'm going to be speaking at, how many of you have ever heard of Faith Church in Dyer, Indiana? I'll be speaking at that church there on September 21st, along with a number of others with the Through the Roof Conference. And uh, they're going to be talking about children and autism, children and, and uh, mental or emotional or cognitive disabilities. And that's going to be a Midwest regional conference to help people in churches reach out for disability ministries for churches all across the area. So uh, if you're even interested in attending that, you can. And, uh, but pray for me as I'll be sharing a, a workshop at that place. And uh, there's also the, the, the next slide I work with, Lift Disability Network. I'm what they call the pastor at large. Not, not the large pastor who needs a diet, but the pastor at large, all right? And what I do now is I write for their, their magazine, their Lift magazine. I write devotions as I do for on Facebook and, and uh, video devotionals I do for on my webpage, but I'm, I'm now on their board for Lift Disability Network. So as you can see, when you invest your prayers for Two Healing Comes Ministries and you invest in your, your uh, financial support, you're really going to help me to do a lot more things to reach out to help a lot of people and to be involved with seeing people come to know Jesus and to learn how to handle whatever trials God allows to come their way. So, thank you very much for letting me be here to share about that. Thanks to Pastor Aaron, and the elders, the deacons, and all of your people that are here. Don't forget, my books are here. We're going to have a book launch, all right? So, I'd love to see you back at the book table before you leave, okay? Amen. I'd like Aaron to just see if he would come and just say a prayer for this ministry that God would just really continue to lead us because prayer is the answer for everything. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for Pastor Ken's life, for his faithfulness in ministry. Lord, we thank you that he has said and responded, here I am to serve you. Here I am to serve others. Here I am to lift other people up, to share my testimony that you have given me. I thank you for the, the faithfulness and obedience that are represented, Lord, in his life and in his testimony, and that he is an example to each, each one of us. And I pray, Lord, that as he has shared the um, vision and the mission of Till Healing Comes, that you would impress it upon us, Lord, to support him, and that we might give cheerfully, and that we might pray fervently, and that we might lend our hand or, or show up for something, Lord, in order to stand with him as he serves you. Lord, thank you for the blessing it is to know that your work is being accomplished uh, through many different believers all over um, this world and most importantly today, Lord, serving and ministering to our, our disabled community. Lord, may the words that are written in this book, Lord, and may Pastor Ken's encouragement help us at Eagle Rock to continue to be an encouragement to disabled people and for this to be an open um, place, Lord, where, where you, the Lord, Jesus Christ, see us as we are love us as we are, and then set us on a firm foundation to do so much more, because all things are possible through you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Eric. Thank you, Eagle Rock. God bless you.